really to get right to the point of the, of the presentation here is that leaders today succeed when they and their teams become masters of brevity. And that, that really is the entire point of the presentation today. And if you look at the world that we live in right now, the world is fundamentally different. It's changed. So I'm going to talk to you about today is as leaders um, commanding organizations in this environment is what you need to be able to do given the, the, star, the, the stark reality, the, the, the challenges that we all face in the world today. Let's start out with just the world that we live in, right? So people today are just drowning in information. We're, we're consuming more information in a day than people consumed in a lifetime a century ago. Uh, people are checking statistically their smartphones about 100 to 150 times a day. People are getting 300 emails a week. Some people are getting 300 emails a day. Um, people are connected, absolutely connected to information in a way that is just changing the mind in how we, how we consume information. Millennials, the next generation, research has said that they spend between 12 to 15 hours a day consuming content. By content, I mean just, it's not just watching television, it is on their smartphone and watching TV, or on their smartphone and on their PC and watching television. My son, for example, he'll watch uh, his favorite movie, Lord of the Rings, and while he's watching the movie, he's distracted because he's also on Instagram and he's on Twitter. So he's not, he's sort of, Divided, the mind is divided. So we live in a world where societally people are absolutely <coughs> overwhelmed with information. And the first thing we need to, um, to do as leaders is to acknowledge and have a heightened awareness that the people that we're talking to and leading cannot process the amount of information that's coming their way. It's physically and mentally impossible for us to, 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 to cut through all the clutter. Um, it's like drinking from a fire hose, some people describe. The second thing that we have to be aware of is the rate of interruptions and just inattention. People are impatient. So people, on average, we've done research, get interrupted six to seven times an hour. This is by other people, not by themselves. And in 50% of the times that people get interrupted, they don't go back to the previous task. So you're dealing with people that can't sustain focus for a long time. And in addition to that, when you look at these types of people, they also suffer from just really, really weak attention span. So the average attention span in the last five years has dropped from 12 seconds to eight. And just to put it in relative perspective, a goldfish has a nine second attention span. <laughs> Which begs a bigger question is who actually doing the research of the attention spans of goldfish, but that's another <laughs> topic, another speak <laughs> for another day. So why is this important? Well, we as leader need to, to understand that the world that we're communicating is not connected and cannot be connected to what we're saying for very long, we're just about to lose our audience and we need to be aware of that. It's a, it's a completely new reality for us as leaders and our teams. We have to become masters of brevity if we're going to be successful. What do I mean? Strategies, plans, product launches, major initiatives, the people that you're talking to aren't really listening because they can't. It's not because they don't want to. They can't. They really struggle, they're struggling mentally with how to consume this information and we need to be able to rise above the situation. Let me give you a, um, a quick example of this. So one of my clients is MasterCard. So MasterCard of course is a global organization and they have operations all over the place and I had the opportunity because of the book to come in contact with one of their top senior leaders. So he laments to me in this role that his leadership team is about 18 people. 10 of them are direct reports. That he, from 6 o'clock in the morning till 10 o'clock at night, is really consuming information from his team. And he's overwhelmed and just completely just inundated from information from his own organization. This has nothing to do with the media that he consumes or the environment that he's in. This is just from his team. So I have a phone conversation with him, a very short phone conversation with him. And I explain him the book and he says, I need you to come to New York and spend a half day with my leadership team. I need you to make this go away. And I'm like, I can help, sure. So I went out to New York and I, I shared with, with him some of the insights I'm sharing with you today. So in one of the exercises with one of the, one of the perpetrators on his team, um, the guy gives a summary and it's a two minute summary, it's really tight. 
right? And he looks at the guy and he says, Michael, where, where's this been? And he says, I didn't know. So as a leader, it's like you don't know what you don't know. And if you just add it all up, your team is overwhelming the leader with information. So we did this exercise. Noticeable difference now. Tighter emails, shorter conference calls, you know, conversations that are supposed to be five minutes and last five minutes that don't last five hours. And he is not glued on email at 10 o'clock at night and his spouse is looking at him like he's hiding as he's consuming all this to get his job done. He was really worried that if it didn't change, he was not going to be successful in his position. Right? There's a lot on the line. So what I'm going to talk to you about today is three tendencies that we all have as leaders that I think that you should focus on, we need to focus on, in order to be able to be successful within the organizational and the operational environment that we're in right now. So if you look at these, these tendencies, there's a couple, there's three, three, three tendencies I want to focus on today. The first one is a tendency to over-explain. What do I mean? I call this the affliction of expertise. You talk to people that are subject matter experts and they give you a briefing and they, and they throw everything into the brief just in case. That's equivalent to, imagine taking your kids on vacation for four or five days and then packing for every eventuality. Snow boots, parka, everything. They just throw it in the suitcase and you open the suitcase you're like, I don't need all, we don't need all this. So this over explaining, this tendency to over explain can get us in trouble. So with that tendency, there's a counter to that, or a tip to help put that back in balance. And it's thinking about the right level of detail given the audience that you're talking to. So think of three levels of detail. The first level of detail, level one, is information that you might need for a minute or two, the short version, okay? Think the movie trailer. Level two would be like maybe two to five minutes, and level three detail is five minutes on. The problem is, is in short conversations, people include level three detail and level one explanations and it makes short conversations go long unnecessarily. So you have to learn the art of trimming. I don't need to know everything. You have to think in your audience that you're talking to, what do they need to know? What's essential versus superfluous? Requires preparation. Requires trimming and discipline. You can't just throw it all there just in case. They need it. It burdens the leader and it, bur it, ma it makes that job almost impossible to do. The second tendency is the tendency to underprepare. There's a famous quote from Blaise Pascal which says, I would have written you a shorter letter if I had more time. Some people attribute that to Mark Twain. So this tendency is, oh, I'm just gonna have a brief conversation. It turns out that brief conversations are very, very difficult to have <laughs> because the opportunity for that to become a conversation that goes in a million different directions is, is, is ever present. What you need to do is you need to take, and this is just the gist of this idea, is, if you're going to take time to prepare, what you're really saying is, I'm going to suffer a little bit up front to make their job easier. So imagine the scene. I'm knocking at the door of somebody's office, and I hey, say, so you got a minute? I've taken time in advance, took out a piece of paper, I drew a little mind map, some key, key ideas, I've got my three key bullet points, the ideas that I want to share, I've written out a piece of paper, I've kind of thought it through my head for maybe two or three minutes and then I walk through the door. And I say, you've got a minute, and it actually can take a minute. What you're doing is, I'm gonna do some hard work up front and make it easier for them to do, to consume that information. You come in, you give a quick update, say, got that, makes sense, we're ready to go, and then you leave. Think of the relief that you create when you take time to prepare. And the second tendency of people under-preparing, especially in brief conversation, if you add it up throughout the entire day, just like my friend at MasterCard, six o'clock to 10 o'clock, there's no time in between. Third tendency, the tendency to just miss the point completely. You never really ask yourself, what's the point? Um, when you think about um, you know, email, consuming media, imagine a scenario for a day that if I told you that you had to consume, um, read emails, check the newspaper, magazines, but there were no headlines all day long. You just had to read them and guess the end of that day, you'd be exhausted. We do that because we don't give the point up front. You guys talk a lot about bottom line up front. It's a practice that's never really used. <laughs> so I'm gonna give you a new, kind of a modern twist to bottom line up front. It's called speak in headlines. As a leader within your organization, moving forward, just tell people, from now on, I expect you to speak to me in headlines. In journalism, they say, don't bear your lead. Don't have the person read the story and get to the point at the end. 
give me the point with your conclusion, give it to me in the beginning. The point of the speech is leaders succeed when they and their teams are masters of brevity. That's the whole point of the presentation. But I took time to prepare that. That's the point. You have to speak in a headline right up front. So they have, they're not wasting any time guessing of what, this, of what the, the presentation's about. Um, <coughs> I'm going to show you a couple of examples here. The first video that we're going to show you, if you're familiar, familiar with um, Kickstarter, this is a startup company that put up this idea in Kickstarter and raised $50,000 in 20 minutes. It's remarkable in, in many levels, but I want to take a look at this. It lasts about a little less than two minutes and take a look at this, at this, uh, this short little video clip if we could pull it up. I'm here to tell you about coal. It solves a problem I think most of us have. See, my wallet is filled with cards. Credit cards, debit cards, rewards cards, gift cards, filled with them. Too many. This is a coin. It's a simple card just like a regular family card. You can swipe it just like any other card. The difference between a coin and any other card. All these cards are inside my coin. And I can pay for stuff with any of them. I'm going to use the personal card for this. My coin has all the same data and acts just like my debit card would when I swipe it. This is a business launch, so I'm going to expense it on the business card. I just tap this button to select the right card, and that's it. How do I get my cards in my coin address? It's a fair question. I use this thing and the coin app. Swipe them in. Take a picture so I know which one it is. And that's it. Oh, security. This is cool too. Let's say you pay with your coin, you've got a lot on your mind, you leave your coin behind. Like a dumb show. See that? The coin uses a low power Bluetooth signal. It knows when your phone is near and when it's not. In this card, all your phone signs. You can add as many as you want and it stays the same size. And all you ever need is one. One coin for all your coins. Okay. What do you think? Easy to follow. Really easy to follow. So I've used this, in sp I've used this example in presentations and speeches and workshops and had people actually on their phone go out and buy one. So there's a lot of things that he's doing well in this, but to go back to the three tendencies that I want you to focus on, the first tendency was the tendency to overexplain. He left a lot of detail out. Notably, what didn't he talk about? How much it cost? <laughs> if, how do you get it? Where do you get it? He talked about Bluetooth, but he didn't go into deep, the deep technology of how it actually works. It's not necessary. My audience doesn't need that. So the right level of detail, minute and 45 seconds. Second thing he did is he took a lot of time to prepare. This was not something that he woke up in the morning and says, I'm going to do this, give this little pitch. This was some really careful preparation of what I needed to. So how he started his opening line. Right out of the gate, you want to be strong right out of the gate. You want to manage people who've got inattention, who've got ADD. Got eight second attention spans, don't have a 30 second slow build. Right out of the gate, he says, the problem is, is that people have got wallets. There's too much in their wallet. You're like, oh, yeah, I do. Tell me more. Right? So he's, he's really carefully preparing it. Right? So he's speaking to you personally. And the third thing is his point is very, very clear. This one card consolidates all your cards into one. It puts all your credit cards into one. Right? You're like, got it. Makes sense to me. Right? It's a great example. So when you do this as leaders, when you explain the right level of detail, you take the time to prepare, and your point is crystal clear. People hear you. And if you don't, they can't. Their mind isn't capable because it's too divided. Their, their inattention will take you in a million different directions. You can't afford for that to happen, and that's why I spent so much time working with your, uh, with your organization, because the things that you're communicating are really important. And you cannot run the risk of having it be long, confusing, or complicated for people to understand. I get the fact that it's complicated. We have to do the hard work up front to make it easier for people to understand on the back side, on the flip side. I'm going to show you one more video clip.
sound booth says, it's about a comedian. So a good headline tells you what it's about. Right? So this presentation, this brief moment with you is about becoming masters of brevity. This is something that you have to learn how to do to be successful. And to wrap up, I will give you some words of wisdom. And the words of wisdom are, quite simply, be better. This is for all of us. Be brief. <laughs> 